Hey y'all, Data Guy here, back with a, another kind of viewer request how-to video, um, where today what I wanted to go through is a pretty typical use case I've been seeing a lot um, for people that are running on Azure, especially analytics teams running on Azure, where you want to have a pipeline that ingests some data from an API or some other source, saves it in uh, object storage, loads it into a database, and then uses that table, or what, you know, once that data has arrived in that table, then updates a data set within Power BI and refreshes it so that a, a uh, actual visualization dashboard that relies on that Power BI data set will be refreshed so you can power a fully automated kind of auto-refreshing um, analytics uh, updating dashboard. Um, and so I'll show you first, you know, how you can do it with having the API drive it, and then also show you if you want to have it be more um, action driven and say, hey, I just want to have a file up here and then trigger the rest of the workflow. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually just set up a new Airflow environment for us to build this pipeline and add all of our requirements and packages. So we'll just CD into my repo that I use for all of these little projects um, and call this Azure um, Power BI Refresh and then CD into there, astro dev init to initialize and just create a Airflow file structure. And then we'll open this up in VS Code and start building out our environment. So go to database repos and then open this up. You can see we have all of our usual kind of tools here within this repository. And then what we'll do is go to our requirements.txt file um, and start bringing all our packages. So what we're gonna add here into our requirements file is just a few kind of critical Azure and just general data manipulation tools. So pandas just for using data frames, creating data frames, uh, being able to actually just store data in them. Um, also Azure identity, so we can use Azure uh, identity roles, uh, intra ID roles, the new fun name for it. Um, Azure blob storage, uh, HTTP providers for API requests, Azure for some of our Azure providers, MS SQL for that Microsoft SQL Server upload I mentioned, Power BI for obviously refreshing that Power BI data set, and then also bringing in Slack here for notifications via Slack. Um, so these are all the requirements you'll need. And so once you have those in your requirements file, you can go in and start creating your DAG. So here, oh, let's call this again, just our Power BI.py, and we can start building out our DAG. So now to actually build this DAG, first thing we're going to do uh, is bring in all those different packages and requirements we brought. <clears throat> so here we have the DAG decorators, task decorators, HTTP sensor, HTTP operator, uh, file system to WASB operator, such as the uh, actual uh, object storage. So this is Microsoft object storage we're gonna use. Uh, then WASB to MS SQL. Uh, operator, then we're going to also implement the WASB hook, MSQL hook for more granular operations, use the Power BI uh, data fresh refre uh, refresh operator and data set sensor operator as well, and the Slack webhook operator too. Um, then also going to have a days ago util so we can just you know kind of backfill or go look one day behind when we're doing scheduling, uh, throw airflow exceptions if for fail certain failure conditions, um, and then date time delta. Uh, for establishing a time delta between two different dates. It's just kind of best practices for uh, having continually scheduled operations, especially for retry delays, and then pandas for pandas data frames, JSON for handling API requests, temp file for creating temporary files um, before we upload them, OS for interacting with the underlying operating system, and date time for uh, actual best practices date time. So whole laundry list of requirements and operators because this is a pretty complex DAG. Um, and then next, we're also gonna just set a couple default args, just on our airflow, set some retries, just again, best practices here. And then what we're going to set next is a whole list of different variables. Um, and setting them up here will help make this a lot more modular. Number one, because hey, if I wanna set this for a different API endpoint or I wanna store any of these variables elsewhere, I can. And if I want to parameterize this too, I could parameterize this to say, hey, you know, inject my API endpoint at runtime um, to run this task and have this be more of a, you know, hey, I actually just want to query an endpoint and process that data um, at will rather than on a schedule. Um, also bring in our API connection ID. So it's just kind of the uh, 
core API uh, actual address. Then we have the connection ID for Azure Blob Storage, the container you're using in Blob Storage, backup container, a MS SQL connection ID, Power BI connection ID, your Power BI data set ID, and then also finally your Slack connection ID for sending notifications out. So now that we have all of our fun variables and packages set up, the next step is we're just gonna define a very simple function um, just to actually define a version file path based on the current date. So this will just allow us to ingest transform data, but also have a saved version, uh, basically record of that uh, transform data for each date by adding a date suffix to this base path before the transform data JSON. So effectively what you'll have is a bunch of folders in your Azure blob storage with each date's transform data. You can obviously remove this if you don't want to save historical data in blob storage, but I just thought it'd be interesting to add. Then just going to define your DAG. So just default args, nothing really special here, just a daily schedule. Um, and then our first task is going to be an HTTP sensor that's going to actually check if the API is available. So this is kind of where I just want to show you so I can swap out. I'm going to swap out again for showing you how you can sense for another file location, but just showing you how you can have this be actually action driven or use the deferrable mode on this. And this can ping a location to check, hey, when is this data available? Once that data is available, then this will uh, return the response code of 200. Then the rest of the DAG will be triggered to actually consume that data from the API. So here, the next step is extract data. Um, so here we have a little extract data operator where effectively what we're doing is wrapping around the simple HTTP operator because this is really just an API call um, and then saving that response, doing a quick JSON load um, to just actually return this as a data frame rather than just a JSON. Um, so, sorry, not a data set, but a data, uh, sorry, Python dictionary. So this will just kind of normalize the response, JSON response, give me more easily usable data there. Um, and then the next step is actually taking that data from just a Python dictionary, which is not a great way to work with data, um, and transform it into a pandas data frame. So our next task is going to read in the data from this extract data task, turn it into a data frame, then replace with uh, the column names with some actual column names, rename them in place to their actual new names, then also validate if uh, any required column has missing values. So if there's missing values, throwing an error uh, so we can identify any null values and so making sure you have data quality checks built into your uh, actual ingestion pipeline. Then saving that transform data to a temporary file. So just naming that, adding that JSON suffix, going DF to JSON, so just saving that to that JSON file, um, and then returning the uh, temporary file name. Um, and then what we're going to do, so just taking front this temporary file that we just saved to our local machine um, and taking that file path. So just save this file path that we used when we wrote to JSON, which saved it onto just the local um, temp file path in Airflow. Uh, then we're going to get that file path and upload it into Azure. So to find a function, upload it into Azure. And so here what we're doing is getting that version path, hooking into uh, our uh, Azure blob storage and then using that connection ID, then using the load file function on the uh, Azure Blob Storage hook to actually load from our version file path into the container we defined earlier, um, and then remove the temp file from our local Airflow environment so your Airflow environment doesn't get clogged up with a bunch of temp files for every time you're running this pipeline. Um, and again, you know, we're saving those in the actual Blob Storage rather than on our local machine, which is of course best practices. So now that we have the data up in Azure Blob Storage, the next step is just going to be backing up our uh, data to a data lake for archival. So this is effectively just creating a backup path um, and just creating a version path. So we have that raw transform data just at the point of ingestion before we actually bring it into Microsoft SQL Server. If you don't want to do that, skip this part, no problem. So next step after backing it up to a data lake is then transferring the data from Azure Blob Storage into Microsoft SQL Storage. So here, load to SQL, uh, Azure Blob to my SQL operator. So luckily there's a convenient operator for this operation. Um, so here, just put in your uh, Azure Blob Storage connection ID, Microsoft SQL connection ID, the container in which your Azure Blob Storage uh, file is, you know, which container it's being used. Then <laughs> the blob name, we're actually going to do a little fancy XCOM pull Jinja templating here to pull the task, um, the file, path from the upload to Azure file path um, and then use that as the blob name. 
and then also use the table name here with whatever table you actually want to upload your data to. Uh, choose the schema of that table. I just have the default values here, and then this will also partition value just date time. Um, so this is going to actually just upload our data into MS SQL. And then the last step is kind of a multi-step process. We're actually going to refresh Power BI, but then also have a second task that's going to check the status of that. So the Power BI refresh operator will just trigger the Power uh, BI dataset refresh operation, but it won't actually wait for it to complete as successfully. So what we're going to need to do is after that, add a step that's going to then check the Power BI status um, of that refresh to make sure that the refresh actually completed um, instead of just getting hung there. So you don't just get kind of a hidden failed uh, error. So crucial thing to add there. And then finally, we'll add a notification via Slack if the Power BI refresh fails. So here, Slack webhook operator, this will only be called if that prior Power BI dataset refreshed failed. So you have that trigger rule one failed on there. Um, and then finally, just to put it all together, all we need is just our various bit mappings here. So we have first API check goes to extract data. That date output gets passed to transform data, which then gets passed into upload to Azure and backup to data lake in parallel. Then uh, after the upload to Azure, that is then going to trigger the load to SQL, refresh that Power BI dashboard, and then check that Power BI status and notify you of any failure. Um, now, if you want to modify the stag and actually have it start with a sensor for a file location uh, appearing, what you can do is just have uh, this file sensor um, so you basically remove this HTTP sensor and just include this file sensor WASB blob sensor. What this will do is look for a source blob uh, name. So here, what you'd add is another uh, field here for source blob. Um, and then what this will do is check to see if a file uh, arrives before processing that file um, and having kind of all the downstream operations happen very similarly. So the only other difference is you change extract data to something like this, where it's actually just pulling that data out um, and then you know, transforming it just as it did before. So whichever paradigm you're going with, Airflow has got you covered and I got you covered over here. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see this extended or different tools used anyway, let me know in the comments below and I will talk to you guys soon. Have a great one. Data guy out.